Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, today, Geopolitical TV welcomes you, our auditorium, and also we're hosting today member of International Circassian Council, one of the famous activists of the Circassian movement for recognition of Circassian rights, and he's standing for rights of the indigenous people of Circassia who are, have been dispersed as a result of a genocide which happened in 1864. Honorable Honor Adel Bashkawi, welcome to our geopolitical TV. We, would, we are more than happy to host you today here and we would like to uh, ask you a couple of questions and also we would like to yourself that you represent yourself and what you're doing, where are you at? And as we know, we both faced the same tragedy in our history. And thank welcome. you, Edward. I'm pleased to be here. And uh, thank you for uh, the invitation. Uh, I was born in Amman, Jordan, to a Circassian uh, uh, parents. And uh, I had my initial education in Jordan and the uh, USA. Uh, then uh, I joined uh, the military. I graduated as uh, a cadet uh, offi uh, officer. Then I continued uh, my uh, courses at the military in Jordan, USA, and the United Kingdom. After five years of service, I resigned and I went to study uh, aviation. I studied aviation in the United States. And uh, when I graduated, I was employed uh, by uh, Royal Jordanian Airline. I stayed there for approximately, approximately 39 years until I uh, uh, retired. I uh, wanted to be doing something uh, important for uh, things that uh, so many uh, people did not know about uh, in the past. Like, uh, I was trying to find out what has happened to the Circassians, why the Circassians are uh, dispersed and uh, living in all of these uh, countries of the diaspora. And uh, I was trying to look for the proper information through the proper references, uh, till we, uh, we found uh, many uh, references that they say what has happened exactly to the Circassian nation. I uh, participated in uh, uh, so many activities in uh, demonstrations, conferences, gatherings, and uh, I tried to write uh, articles, researches, uh, I translated uh, genocide documents from uh, Russian archives, uh, which uh, prove uh, which uh, prove uh, lots of uh, uh, what is to do with the genocide that was committed against the Circassian nation, and. Uh, the most important uh, thing that I felt that I'm obligated to do what I can to make more people in the world know what has happened with the Circassians and to try to regain the rights of the Circassians. Uh, we have a couple of questions regarding your activities. So, as we know, not only Circassians have been dispersed in the Middle East. So were Armenians dispersed in 1915, and I'm pretty sure we communicated our communities with each other. 
So either any level of cooperation, for example, in Jordan between Armenian communities and the Circassian communities and what you are doing together, or are there any efforts to do that? There is, in fact, no such uh, uh, work uh, between the Circassians and the Armenians in Jordan in that regard. Uh, even though uh, they are living there uh, for a long time and they have uh, mutual uh, respect and they are respected by the people in Jordan who are living with them because of their honesty, courage and uh, uh, being uh, straightforward people. Uh, uh, but uh, 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 maybe on the, on the personal basis so many Circassians have good relations with the Armenians. Uh, either uh, any efforts, especially when these bad uh, happenings are going on in Middle East, I mean the Syria war, civil war, these uh, factory groups, the government repressive machine, Turkish influence in the Syria, and I am pretty sure that Circassians and Armenians are facing big problems living in Syria. Are there any f efforts to cooperate between each other? Actually, we are not indigenous people of that area, so we have less rights over there, and we are more calm than the locals. Uh, probably there was, or there is, uh, some cooperation, but I am not... Uh, uh, in uh, the picture of what's going on. But the most important thing is Circassians all around the world uh, and even the uh, uh, Circassians of Syria themselves, they tried to uh, get in contact with the Russian government in so many different ways and means to try to uh, go back to the, uh, to the Caucasus, to their original homeland, and live there after what has happened in Syria. Uh, some of the, or I would say, all the Circassian uh, villages in Homs area, especially our Marj Sultan, uh, close to Damascus, uh, were uh, uh, destroyed, and people had to move from a place to another. Some people, they had to move to Damascus and uh, hardly find uh, uh, a dignified uh, place to live. So many of them had to leave uh, to the countries around them, maybe to uh, Jordan, uh, Lebanon, and Turkey. Uh, some of them came to Jordan, but uh, uh, not so many if you uh, uh, make it uh, comparative to their uh, number, uh, but many of them went to Turkey and uh, they, they are living there. But uh, to go back to uh, the Russian uh, factor there, that Russia uh, totally refused Circassians to go back to their homeland, except some of them, maybe uh, they don't uh, count more than 1,000 that they were able to go because of uh, could be luck or people had uh, visas at the time or maybe some of the students that they were uh, in the North Caucasus. Uh, but nobody else was able to go until now. Russia is refusing that Circassians go back to their homeland. Uh, just coming up next question, Honorable Adel. What do you think, why Russia do not let Circassians to repatriate to their homeland? Uh, the reason is obvious. Uh, of course, Russia, uh, when, uh, uh, when declared the war against Circassia and Circassians had to uh, fight a defensive war for uh, 101 years, uh, which was a destructive and brutal war, uh, Circassians uh, that time lost maybe 50 percent of their uh, population, uh, which is uh, the the actual genocide that happened against the Circassians. But uh, also, the rest of uh, the population or the population, they were uh, 
uh, deported to the Ottoman Empire. Uh, only 10 percent they stayed in the Caucasus for uh, maybe some of them they ran to the mountains. The rest they agreed to the Russian uh, uh, conditions to move to uh, beyond the Koban River. So Russia wanted Circassia without Circassians, especially the part that is on the Black Sea. That's why uh, Circassians were uh, uh, pushed out of their homeland. Uh, they went to the Ottoman Empire. Some of them at that time even were taken to the Balkan and other places to fight for the uh, Ottoman Empire. Uh, some of them, uh, when uh, there was the ceasefire in the Balkan or the treaty with uh, Russia at that time, uh, they had to leave either to go back to uh, Turkey, to Anatolia, or uh, to be dispersed somewhere else, which uh, many of them went to Syria, Jordan, and uh, other parts uh, of the Middle East. Uh, so uh, that happened after or immediately after uh, 1864. Uh, Russia, uh, being uh, maintaining the same uh, Russian Empire's uh, policy, seemingly, they don't want Circassians to go back to their homeland. And that's why Russia pushed them out. The, the, the Russians don't want the Circassians to go back. Uh, it's a coincidence or not, but the Russian ambassador in Turkey, I think Dobrolubo, Say, uh, when the Turkish officials asked him why you care about Armenians, he, he responded, we need Armenia without Armenians. So, so familiar. So coming up, next question. Can it be, uh, as we know, a lot of Armenians right now are living in Circassia, starting from Abkhazian lands, uh, the, the places where Abkhazian lives, the uh, territory which is uh, disputable between Georgia and Abkhazia and Russia, and uh, Sochi, I mean, Vodis, uh, I mean, the Stavropol, a lot of Armenians are living. Uh, th there are numbers over a million. And as we know, in Republic of Turkey, the Kayseri, the Rab zone, a lot of Circassians are living. So the places where Armenians lived before genocide, now are living a lot of Circassians. The places where the Circassians were living, now there are a lot of Armenians. Can it be a result of a mutual agreement between Russian Empire and the Ottoman Empire of displacement of populations? Uh, it could be uh, one of the reasons uh, is uh, a complicit uh, work between uh, the uh, big powers at the time. Because if you remember, uh, uh, President uh, Yeltsin sent uh, uh, a message to the uh, uh, Circassians who called them uh, the mountaineers during his uh, era. And uh, he was just shy of saying that uh, he's recognizing, uh, recognizing the Circassian genocide. He said in his telegram that uh, uh, atrocities and problems have happened and let's look for the future. And uh, um, at the same time, he says that other great powers and he even uh, uh, counted those powers. He uh, called them in name uh, Persians, uh, uh, Turks, uh, and even I think uh, Britain and France, that they were uh, main players at the time and all of them take the responsibility of such thing. That's one. The second thing, I have seen uh, a document uh, because I was involved uh, with other Circassians to uh, uh, translate uh, documents that was extracted from the Russian uh, archives, uh, talking about the Circassian uh, genocide. And uh, one of those documents uh, says that when the Russian uh, or other ships 
taking the Circassians to be deported to the Ottoman Empire. They were uh, trying to bring back uh, Armenians and Greeks to Circassia. Yes. And that's uh, a confirmation for what you have said, that uh, uh, the Ottomans, maybe they had uh, back deal or under the table deal with the Russians, with the uh, Russian Empire at the time. Uh, to uh, uh, take uh, maybe the, the Armenians to live there uh, in the uh, uh, vacated land that the Circassians had to be vacated when the Russians came and they destroyed the Circassian towns and villages and they killed the Circassians. Uh, uh, they had uh, brought settlers. Yes. Uh, Armenians were there, uh, Cossacks, Russians, and uh, maybe other uh, nationalities. That's why uh, uh, it is uh, a part of uh, the imperial policy is to have this uh, exchange of, uh, of uh, settlers, I would say, or deportees, or whatever you call it. Told you there are some Armenian political analysts and politologists that suspect that Russian Federation, uh, during its negotiations on any type of issue uh, with Turkey, is bargaining Armenian question. I mean, they are blackmailing each other with such, uh, which are done, as you say, mentioned under the table, which is not exposed by the media. And some of them say that Russian Federation is bargaining Turkey or blackmailing Turkey with Armenian genocide. And sometimes Turkey is doing the same thing with the Circassian issue or Circassian coast. What do you think? Is, it, is this version has a right to live? Uh, Are I, we an object of bargaining? I believe politics is bargaining. And uh, uh, these countries, most of the time, uh, to adopt their policies or different policies, they bargain with each other, maybe, or uh, they try to put their uh, demands or their uh, uh, conditions. But. Uh, in regard to uh, the Circassians uh, or the Russians, the Circassians have uh, written many times to the Russian government, to the Russian president, to the uh, State Duma, uh, official letters from the Circassian organizations and individuals and even uh, the leaders in uh, uh, the Circassian homeland or in diaspora, asking them to recognize the Circassian gen genocide or to solve out the Circassian uh, question or let the, Circassi uh, the Circassians go back to their homeland. Uh, uh, so many uh, different things that go with restoring the legitimate rights. But uh, uh, unfortunately, the Russians always uh, had turned uh, 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 their uh, uh, face away from even accepting such uh, demands or such questions. And um, uh, at many occasions, they had said that uh, uh, there were atrocities, there were pro problems, but they did not reach the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, level of genocide. Uh, they try to the last minute to ignore that. So the genocide is denied so far from uh, by the Russians. The same way maybe by Turkey in regard to dealing with, uh, with, the, ter with the Armenians. Uh, maybe there are things go to the last uh, minute to be, to be recognized. Maybe to the waiting for the right moment or to the right people to come and recognize that uh, demand or recognize that uh, reality. Uh, in regard to the Circassians, uh, uh, 
uh, when uh, they had uh, given up uh, talking to the Russians, they had even sent a letter to the European Parliament in uh, 2006. Uh, attached to that uh, letter, there was, of course, the letter was signed by uh, so many uh, Circassian organizations around the world and Circassian leaders also around the world uh, requesting the uh, European Parliament to recognize the Circassian genocide. Uh, attached to that letter, there was a CD uh, showing uh, uh, documents extracted from uh, the Russian archives uh, proving the uh, the atrocities and the genocide uh, uh, crimes they were committed and at the same time uh, they show the correspondence and the orders of the Russian uh, command to the people in the field what to do with the Circassians how to uh, destroy the, the villages very familiar and how to uh, deport them even when the when the uh, when the ships come to take the people from the shore uh, they take them uh, uh, by name and there are lists of names of people who were who were deported and these documents to uh, to prove that thing and uh, there is a, a famous uh, russian lie also at saying Circassians went on their own. Uh, nobody uh, forced them to go. They just wanted uh, to go to Mecca or they wanted to go I don't know where. Very coincidence. It's not coincidence because the ships from drop zone were doing the same thing to Armenians. They, they just wa left, left their motherland. They, they left just go to Russia for better life. Is it logic for 90% of the people to leave their homeland uh, uh, just, yes, just yes, for that? They say yes. Are they going it's, for... It's, it's, it's so common for us. Are they going for a trip yes. or for a vacation or yes, something? Yes, they went for a better life. <laughs> this is the official abbreviation of what happened. Uh, so uh, there are so many things hidden. There are so many things are explained the wrong way. And uh, at the end... Uh, uh, truth will be the main thing for everybody to recognize. Honorable Ade, there is uh, uh, last year in January, very interesting thing happened in Circassia. It was a conflict, a regular conflict between one Armenian guy and one Russian. So the Russian guy mm, cursed Armenia. He hit him and he killed him in Circassia, in the, main body, in the city of Mimbodi. Like under the order or something like immediately, like in one hour, a huge demonstration started in Mod, in Mimbodi, in Petigors. The Cossacks came out to the streets and say, Armenians, get out from Russia. We need immediate deportation for Armenians. So started a big series of action, actions, demonstrations of so-called locals, which were mostly Cossacks, uh, asking and demanding from the local authorities to deport all Armenians. As we know, the residing of those Armenians are a result of what we say genocide in 1915 and plus the war in Armenia between the Republic of Azerbaijan and Nagorno-Karabakh. And a lot of Armenians didn't come to Circassia for better life. But what do you think? What is your opinion? Can Armenia stay or can the Russian nationals or nationalists tell should Armenians live in Circassia or no? Uh, in that regard, I think the Armenians are, uh, and the Circassians, both of them, are, uh, I wouldn't say Caucasians because when you say Caucasians, it's a race, but they are peoples and nations of the Caucasus. Yes. So uh, uh, they are uh, uh, having problems uh, there uh, because they are uh, under the 
the power or the authorization of other foreigners or foreign uh, powers uh, for the Armenians who were uh, either, uh, if you would say, brought to Circassia or to the North Caucasus, or they were deported or they came on their own because of better life. Uh, but at the end, they are uh, in, uh, in the Caucasus. Now, if anybody to say that uh, he's a foreigner or uh, he has to, uh, to leave, uh, they are the foreigners, the foreigners who came from outside the Caucasus. At the end, uh, the nations of the Caucasus, I think, in the future, if it's not the near future, one day they will uh, have their uh, rights uh, returned to them and they have to, uh, to be recognized and they have to have their uh, uh, nations and they have to have uh, maybe a, a common uh, agreement between them, most probably like uh, what has happened with the Europeans in the European Union. Union maybe of Caucasus people. Maybe in the future that would has happen because right. that yeah. would be on the... Uh, uh, on the benefit of everybody because they will be able to defend their uh, Caucasus against any foreigner that would think that will uh, will take the Caucasus again. Uh, thank you so much for this informative answer and really it is reason uh, the, the reasonable explanation of situ current situation. One more question is regard to geopolitics because we, as you know, we're a geopolitical club and we are concerned about everything that is going inside and around, especially Caucasus region. What do you think, after lifting the sanction from Islamic Republic of Iran, uh, what type of uh, developments can happen in the region, especially in the growing tension between Russian Federation and Iran? because of the oil market. They sh they're playing good friends, but you know, the money talks and business walks. <laughs> and uh, I mean, the can Iran consider the Circassian genocide as a tragedy or can be usable or can Iran also be involved for in this matter because Iran declared and always ne and they never deny that stability in the Caucasus is the main interest of Iran. Mm -hmm. So, what do you think? Can it bring positive any waves or signals to the region? I think uh, again we will go back to the uh, country's uh, best. Uh, best uh, way of doing things for their selfish uh, benefits. Uh, I, don't th I don't think they would do anything that uh, would harm uh, the relations with, uh, with the others, especially between Iran and Russians in this uh, example, except if it comes to a certain extent that it's either make or break or maybe uh, Russia is uh, uh, having uh, the same, uh, uh, I would say, destiny like the Soviet Union, or maybe if uh, something uh, uh, big happens. But uh, in, in the real life, uh, if things go at least the way it is right now, uh, the Machiavelli uh, way of uh, of uh, thinking or uh, of policy uh, accomplices uh, of Iran, uh, they make them always decide what is good for them or for themselves. Uh, I remember something happened during the uh, Russian uh, Shashan War. Uh, I think it was the second uh, Shashan war, if I'm not mistaken, uh, that uh, uh, 
at that time, Ali Akbar Wilayati uh, was uh, the foreign minister of the Iran. First time. Maybe the first time then. So he was, uh, because I remember that incident. And uh, he was asked uh, about what do they, th what, do, uh, what do they think about what's happening between the Russians and the Chechens? Do they, uh, as uh, they claim that they are with the Islamic uh, people and they would protect Muslims and so on, would they side with the, with the Shashans in this case? Would they support them? Would they do something uh, about the situation? And he answered that uh, the Shashan uh, problem or the Shashan war is uh, interior uh, Russian problem. And in that case, uh, it uh, turned out to, uh, to give the, the answer, which is uh, they just go for what is good for them. If they think one time that uh, recognizing the Circassian genocide would be on their benefit, they would do it. But at the same time, maybe uh, at the present time or near future, I would say they would not do that because still they still have lots of, uh, of benefits with Russia. They might need their uh, weapons. They might. Uh, uh, they want to uh, renew their uh, airplanes and their uh, airlines. Uh, they already signed the contract with Boeing and Airbus. Uh, well, uh, they always have uh, a second uh, way of doing things, a parallel way. <laughs> uh, they do that uh, with yeah. the West. In case the West stops, they go to the other side. But it is good that uh, Circassian politicians like you have a pragmatic vision. Because the, the things that you are talking with us are pragmatic views and visions. Like we have met Armenians or Circassians that are maximalist in their demands. And finally they got nothing. And they hope for justice, for this. But meanwhile they forget about pragmatism and reality. So it is good to speak and to cooperate with person who knows what means pragmatism and what means efforts. Uh, a result of possible. Thank you. And one more question. <laughs> there are a lot of questions, yeah. you know, a lot, uh, and questions still are coming, by the way, on our website. Sure. So, like, how do you think in the future, like, uh, we got right to return to our motherland in Turkish Republic, where there are villages that now are completely Circassians. And there are villages in Circassia that are completely Armenians. How are we going to deal with that? I mean, uh, of course, nobody going to talk about replacement to go back home. I, no, nobody going to go back, first of all. I, I mean, this, I want to give importance of these talks between Armenians and Circassians, importance for these future generations, because they can find consideration between each other when we are establishing something now that tomorrow when our kids or our grandkids go back to our motherland they they see friends they see friends Circassians they see friends Armenians so they live with each other in peace and nobody can initiate any type of conflict between them like to or provoke conflict. It can be. We know that from the Soviet, Soviet uh, let's call experience, that they were provoking conflicts very fast. The KGB was working, they were provoking uh, conflicts between this ethnical group, that ethnical group. So to prevent this, I think, to prevent such things, I give two very big importance for our coordination between Armenians and Circassians? I think uh, the most important thing uh, which you have uh, brought uh, in your uh, a question which goes uh, to, uh, uh, to make it uh, important to have coordination between uh, the Circassians and uh, 
and the Armenians, uh, especially in the common uh, interests and the common goals. Like uh, the Circassians are looking forward to have their legitimate rights uh, restored and uh, to go back to their homeland uh, to get the, the Circassian genocide recognized by the Russians and uh, the other consequences that they have to come with the recognition. I don't want, I don't want to, uh, uh, to list them now, but uh, this is normal according to the international law and according to uh, the Universal uh, Declaration of Human Rights and according to the uh, declaration uh, of indigenous uh, uh, people's rights of the United Nations. Uh, uh, everybody has to restore its rights, which they are denied uh, till now by Russia in regard to the Circassians. Uh, they have to uh, to work according to the international law, again. Uh, they have to uh, respect uh, the human race. They, they have to avoid uh, dealing with others, uh, even if Russians wanted to stay in, uh, in Circassia, in future Circassia, I hope. Uh, they should be welcome uh, in an honest, uh, uh, and uh, innocent uh, stay, uh, whether uh, Cossacks or others. But uh, I would say just to, to say something in regard to some of the people who say that uh, maybe the, the Circassians are uh, being uh, isolated or talking of uh, their, themselves only and so on. No, the Circassians, the national Circassians are, or the patriots even, uh, they look at people all the same. Uh, initially, uh, the Adiga Circassians respect the Abaza, they respect the uh, Balkars, they respect the Karashai, they respect the Dagestanis, the Shashans, and all of the co peoples of the Caucasus. They should be one team. All of them had been victims of the Russian Empire. and. Uh, uh, we had, we, Circassians and Armenians, at the end, we were uh, victims of uh, uh, foreign, uh, bargaining. foreign bargaining between the big powers uh, at certain time. And uh, uh, now things will go back maybe to the right uh, track and everybody will restore its rights uh, according to the international law. But I have to, or I would like to mention something, which is in regard to the uh, uh, religious factor. Now, if you look at the Armenian uh, problem or Armenian uh, question or the Circassian question, they relate that to, uh, to a religious uh, reason in a way or another. Like, like for this example, I would throw the example of the Circassians and the Russians. When the Russian Empire wanted to fight the Circassians and to uh, humiliate, them, uh, humiliate them and uh, kill them, uh, deport them, or uh, so many different things to be done, they have used a nasty way that uh, uh, the Russian Empire mobilized the uh, Orthodox Church against the Circassians to let people uh, or the public to be with their government against the Circassians because the, because the Circassians are Muslims. But I would say something, not all the Circassians are Muslims. Yeah, there are some Circassians, especially now in Kabarda, uh, they are uh, you Christians. Have Christians you have uh, even. And some Circassians on Ossetia, they are, uh, okay, yes. they are uh, Christians as well. And uh, one more thing, uh, when the Russian empires, uh, I mean, when the Russian empire fought the Circassians because they are Muslims, they did not fight only the Circassians. Now, nowadays, which is uh, uh, 
which looks like uh, 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 a continuation of what has happened in the, in the past. The Russian uh, uh, state had the war with Georgia. They had George with Ukraine, uh, a war with Ukraine. They had problems with, Mol with Moldavia. They had problems with the uh, Baltic republics. All of these I have uh, listed now. They are Christians. Are they Muslims? Uh, Orthodox Christian. <laughs> so this, it's, it's pure imperialism. It's not religious. It's imperialism. It's nationalism that people uh, had to lose their homeland because they are Circassians and maybe Armenians because they were Armenians. But I don't believe it's, uh, it's because they are, uh, Christian. they are Christian. Yes. Uh, there is more, more to that. Uh, it's only pure and true imperialism. Yes, it's an ethnic problem. The ethnicity, uh, the funniest moment is that, you know, the Caspian Sea have been an internal sea of Persian Empire. That was Daryayi Mazandaran, or as they say Mazandaran Sea. The Turkish sultans and Russian emperors always were le learning from Persians as a, they were, let's call them like the teachers, mental teachers of the Turkish emperors and Russian emperors were the Persians. Even the Pers Turkish sultans were writing each other letters in Persian. I have met some documents that the Ottoman Empire declared Black Sea as an internal sea in, or internal lake. And same declarations I have read in Russian manifests by the Tsar that this is our own lake and this is going to be inside of our empire. I think this strategy of controlling Black Sea, the Black Sea shore, so because it's a way to the world ocean, that is also a motivation of eliminating, let's call this collateral nations, collateral, like they are disturbing them to work easier in, geopol in this uh, specific geopolitical region. I think so. What do you think about that? Have you made such documents, for example? Do you see that there is a dictate of two big countries over the Black Sea? I remember that there was uh, a competition in the past between, uh, if you if you mean uh, 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 Persia and Russia in particular, but uh, maybe now uh, or then during the Ottoman uh, uh, era, that there was uh, a, a similar thing going on around uh, about the Black Sea, uh, but eventually or before uh, the last, uh, b before the war ended with the Circassians in 1864, there was the Andrianapol uh, uh, Treaty between uh, Russia yeah. and, uh, uh, or the Russian Empire and the Ottoman Empire, that the, uh, the uh, Ottoman Empire uh, uh, had to uh, give uh, concessions to to the Russian Empire, telling the Russians that uh, they don't want uh, the Caucasus anymore. Uh, they just uh, turn it uh, to the Russians. But yeah. they never owned it. They never occupied Circassia. They never ruled Circassia. Up to Gurdjistan Villa, it was Turkish but, presence. But there was maybe uh, some competition between them and uh, at the end uh, the Russians uh, had ruled uh, uh, what uh, you know what was on their uh, uh, on their uh, benefit and uh, they took uh, the Crimea that time and they have taken the Circassian coast yes. now they have Abkhazia uh, as uh, uh, I would say alliance, as uh, uh, our uh, Abkhaz uh, brothers say. Uh, so uh, most, or let's say half, of the Black Sea is with, with the Russians, and that that what was 
the plan from the beginning since yes. the the Russian Empire and in regard to the Caspian Sea uh, maybe the same thing has uh, been going on between the Russians and yes. uh, and and the uh, and the Persians before, before rise uprising the Russia that uh, actual actual Caspian Sea have been under Persian control true but now uh, it's uh, mixed, I would say, or... Yeah, it's Kazakhstan uh, now, Turkmenistan, uh, yeah. etc., etc. And five uh, countries. Five countries. Uh, at the end, it is a uh, closed sea. Yeah. But the uh, Black Sea is more strategic uh, for, for uh, Russia. And uh, it gives them, uh, you know, the, the strength to be able to uh, have the pressure uh, maybe on on, other, on others i don't want to 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 name uh, yeah. those countries but uh, it gives them uh, a source of strength i would say uh, uh, honorable adel one more question and our time <laughs> is coming to the final end as we know circassians do not have independent state independent state and they have done some efforts to be represented in the unrepresented nation organization am i correct true and last year two years ago lesbians did some efforts the nations of caucasus which are divided between russian federation and azerbaijan republic mm -hmm. and talishis now are represented in that organization which are also indigenous people of so, uh, re region of the southern Azer of Republic of South, south of the Republic of Azerbaijan. Have you met them? Either any coordination with between you and those people? Uh, I don't have a uh, track uh, in, in that uh, regard, but I know that the Circassians are uh, part of. Uh, the uh, unrepresented uh, uh, peoples and nations but i think the circassian ambitions are further more than this we want to be uh, presented in uh, in other uh, uh, in, in still instead of the symbolic uh, organization like this with all respect but uh, we have to go to the uh, union we have to go to the united nations we have to reach the united states of america and other western countries to recognize our uh, uh, our uh, problems and to uh, help us rec uh, restore our uh, legitimate rights uh, our rights are legitimate our rights had been uh, stolen from us and we are entitled be able to get them back uh, in non-violent and peaceful way and according to the uh, international law. Thank you very much, Honorable Adel. Thank you. God bless you, your struggle. It's really, it was an honor to meet you today. It was very interesting to hear your views and you, with all respect, Thank you, and you're always welcome to. Thank you very much, and thank you for thank inviting me. Thank you so much.